Here are the topics that will be covered in the US pressure groups revision video. This video will focus on a comparison between the UK and US pressure groups, looking at how they operate, their impact, and whether or not they are powerful. We are now going to start the comparison of both pressure groups in the UK and the US, starting with the influence of pressure groups on government in both countries. Pressure groups are important to democracy as they allow citizens to participate in politics. In both countries, membership of pressure groups has increased over the last few decades, but well-funded groups and corporations appear to have disproportionate influence on government. Similar interest groups exist in both countries. The US Chamber of Commerce and the Confederation of British Industry represent business. Unions represent workers, the AFL-CIO is a federation of US labour unions, and the Trade Unions Congress is the UK equivalent. Professional organisations exist in both countries. There is the British Medical Association and the American Medical Association, which both represent doctors. There are women's groups such as the National Organisation for Women in the US and the Forset Society in the UK. Pro promotional groups defend many similar causes. The American Civil Liberties Union, the ACLU, supports civil liberties and liberty has a similar aim in the UK. Prominent environmental groups exist in both countries and some are multinational, such as Greenpeace, which is an organisation both in the US and in the UK. Pressure groups have similar organisational structures in both countries, although US pressure groups often have both federal and state-based officers. The insider-outsider and promotional interest typologies can be applied to both the US and UK pressure groups. Both countries have seen a rise in social movements in the recent years. Many of these, like Black Lives Matter and the youth climate movement, have had an international reach. These are the important structural differences between pressure groups in the US and UK. We're now going to look at the influence of pressure groups on the government in the US and UK with a focus on access points. The US federal system provides far more access points for pressure groups to focus on. The UK has general elections, elections to the devolved assemblies and local elections, whereas the US has many more elections for pressure groups to campaign in. The US also has a directly elected president and the two electors chambers of legislative. House seats are contested every two years with one third of Senate seats. So elections are normally more frequent than in the UK, where general elections should only occur every five years under the Fixed Term Parliament Act of 2011. The USA has direct primary elections for the selection of party candidates, and the US has 50 state legislators, 49 of which are bicameral, and therefore have elections for both state and house senates. Nebraska is the only unicameral state in the USA, where all UK devolved legislators are also unicameral. Each state has a directly elected governor, resulting in 50 state governments that can be lobbied as opposed to three devolved governments in the UK. At the local level, the US has more than 19,000 directly elected mayors in addition to city councils. The UK also has local council elections, but only just 24 directly elected mayors. Direct democracy in the US also provides more access points for pressure groups. Ballot initiatives and referendums are held on a broad range of issues from marijuana use to felony disenfranchisement. Pressure groups can campaign to get their priorities included as an initiative on the ballot or on either side of the argument in the initiative or referendum vote. UK referendums are held much less often and on constitutional issues that tend to apply to a narrower range of pressure groups. The EU referendum was an exception because the changes to UK law, government and politics were so sweeping that they engaged promotional groups such as environmental group Greenpeace who were keen to remain in the EU so that collective action could be taken on climate change. We're now going to focus on the involvement of pressure groups in the election cycle. The most striking difference between the US and UK pressure groups is their involvement in elections. US pressure groups have the right to spend unlimited amounts of money on electioneering and donate millions via PACs and super PACs in each election cycle. In contrast, there are tighter restrictions on campaign finance in the UK. Many pressure groups are registered charities which must be independent of party politics, so cannot make political donations or endorse political candidates. Trade unions must have permission from members to operate their political funds. Any non-party campaigners, including pressure groups who spend more than £20,000 in England on electoral campaigning in a single election, must be registered with the Electoral Commission and are subject to regulations and restrictions. During general elections, pressure groups can spend a maximum of £319,000 in England when, with spending in, in an individual constituency for a parliamentary general election at just £9,750. 
Donations to a party of more than £7,500 must also be declared. There are fines for breaching regulations. After the 2016 referendum, the Leave.EU campaign was fined £66,000 and the Vote Leave campaign was fined £61,000. US pressure groups spend far more on election campaigning than UK pressure groups. In the 2020 presidential and congressional elections, Super PAC spent $1.8 billion of the total $14 billion of the election, whereas in 2017, the UK general election, non-party campaigners spent £2.5 million of the total of £41.5 million in election spending. Political advertisement on television is banned in the UK, with the exception of a small number of party political broadcasts in the run-up to elections. Pressure groups in the US spend large sums on television adverts attacking or endorsing candidates. We're now going to focus on lobbying, both in the US and in the UK. The professional lobbying industry has traditionally been more developed in the US, where there are more than 11,000 professional lobbyists. The UK has around 140 registered firms and individuals, but its lobbyist industry has grown in recent decades, particularly as a result of Brexit. Pressure groups and companies lobbied for their interests to be represented in the new agreement with the EU. The Alliance for Lobbying Transparency estimated that the UK lobbying industry was worth £2 billion a year in 2017, while OpenSecrets.org put the value of the US lobbying industry at $3.47 billion in 2019. The revolving door exists in the UK, as it does in the US, with former ministers and MPs regularly working for professional lobbying firms after they leave office leading to several cash for access scandals in which former ministers were caught boasting of their ability to influence government on behalf of private clients. Ministers' former staff may also use their contacts and expertise to work as lobbyists. Both countries have had rules intended to reduce the influence of former government officials. In the UK, former ministers cannot lobby the government for two years after leaving office. In 2017, Trump placed a five-year ban on former officials lobbying the government. However, loopholes can allow former government officials to sidestep the rules in both countries. We're now going to focus on an impact of legal challenges, which influences pressure groups in both the US and the UK. Pressure groups in both countries use legal challenges to hold the government to account. Judicial review is, more limited, is a more limited power in the UK, as it only applies to government and not to the Acts of Parliament, whereas the US Supreme Court can rule that Acts of Congress are unconstitutional. The potential for landmark rulings to fundamentally change the law means that US pressure groups spend a great deal of time and money on legal challenges and preparing amicus curiae briefs. Pressure groups in the UK also have successfully challenged the government in courts on many occasions. For example, the Public Law Project, a UK legal charity, successfully challenged the government's imposition of a residence test for legal aid. This is state help with legal costs. In R, on the application of the Public Law Project versus Lord Chancellor in 2016, governments often accept the decision of the courts, as in this example where the residence test was removed. In the two Miller cases, R. Miller versus the Secretary of State for Exiting the European Union in 2016, and R. Miller versus the Prime Minister in 2019, Activist Gina Miller used crowdfunding to finance the successful legal challenges to the government's plan to withdraw the UK from the EU without legalisation by Parliament, and Boris Johnson's prorogation of Parliament in the run-up to the UK's withdrawal from the EU. Unlike in the US, if government has a majority in Parliament with which to pass retrospective le le legislation, it can change the law in its favour, overruling the Supreme Court's decision. The Miller cases had the support of a majority government in Parliament, otherwise they could potentially have been overturned. When the UK Supreme Court makes a decision of incompatibility with the Human Rights Act 1998, Parliament can choose to ignore this ruling. Pressure groups campaigning for prisoners' voting rights have supported a series of legal challenges via the European Court of Human Rights. In judgments from 2005 to 2019, the Court has repeatedly found the UK in break of the European Convention on Human Rights. Other than a minor change announced in 2017 that planned to allow about 100 prisoners on temporary release to vote, successive UK governments and parliaments have ignored the ruling. Both countries have many different types of pressure groups of varying sizes. However, it is possible to generalise about their relative power and influence. US pressure groups have a greater opportunity to influence politics and are collectively more powerful, 
A comparison in the US and UK illustrates their differing power and influence. We're going to focus by starting with the comparison of methods used by pressure groups in both countries, starting with electoral campaigning. Differences in electoral law allow US pressure groups to spend an unlimited amount on electioneering, while UK pressure group electoral spending is heavily restricted. In the US, the amount of money involved in elections means members of Congress spend up to 50% of their time fundraising. In 2016, the average cost of winning a House seat was $1.5 million and more than $19 million for a Senate seat. Legislators therefore have a strong incentive to keep their financial backers happy when voting on legislation. The US government is also subject to similar forces as pressure groups make large financial interventions in the presidential elections. US pressure groups can spend heavily on television advertising to influence the public directly. This gives pressure groups another form of leverage over legislators who are ultimately accountable to their voters. In contrast, political television advertising is banned in the UK. Pressure groups in both countries use online and social media advertising during the election campaign. We're now going to look at links to political parties. Promotional groups have often had close links to political parties in the US. Gun rights and pro-life groups tend to support Republicans, while gun control and pro-choice groups tend to support Democrats. In the UK, promotional groups are often charities and therefore are not allowed to endorse political candidates. Big business has traditionally been most supportive of the Republicans and the Conservative Party. However, the Democratic Party regularly receives large sums from big business and wealthy individuals. The Labour Party has also done so at times, particularly during Tony Blair's new Labour government, whose centrist economic policies appeal to business. Now let's focus on trade union activity. The Democrats and the Labour Party are both supposedly supported by trade unions, but unions have more of an influence on Labour Party. Labour was founded with union support and many unions are affiliated members of the party with voting rights and they play an essential role in its financing. A total of 93% of registered donors to Labour during the 2019 general election campaign came from unions. Trade union funding is less important to the Democratic Party, which receives large sums from big business and wealthy individuals. Unions have more influence on government in the UK, as some 23% of UK employees are union members, compared to only 10% in the US. The power of unions has been decreasing in both countries, as each has around 50% fewer union members than in the 1970s. This has reduced the ability of unions to exert pressure on the government through strike action, which has been historically low in recent years. In 2018, 2.8 million working days were lost to US strikes and 273,000 in the UK. Now we're going to focus on lobbying. Weaker party discipline and the separation of powers in the US mean that there is more to be gained by lobbying legislators in Congress as well as the government. In the UK, party discipline is generally stronger, so lobbying tends to focus on the government and not on MPs. There are many more access points for US lobbyists as lobbying takes place at both federal and state levels. We're now going to look at the use of the courts. Legal action is used more by US pressure groups, as the US Supreme Court has greater power than the UK Supreme Court. US pressure groups have won landmark rulings, including desegregation with Brown v. Topeka, abortion with Roe v. Wade, and same-sex marriage with Obergefell v. Hodges. Pressure groups in both countries have used the courts to successfully defend citizens' rights. The US Alliance Defending free Freedom represented cake baker Jack Phillips in Masterpiece Cake Shop Limited versus Colorado Civil Rights Commission in 2018, and the Christian Institute funded Lee versus Ashes Bakery Company Limited in 2018. Both rulings protected the bakery owner's religious rights not to make a cake promoting same-sex marriage. Next, we have campaigning for or against judicial appointments. This method is widely used in the US, particularly for appointments to the Supreme Court. Pro-business groups such as the US Chamber of Commerce and Americans for Prosperity backed Brett Kavanaugh's 2018 appointment to the Supreme Court and were fiercely opposed by liberal groups. Pressure groups do not campaign for or against judicial appointments in the UK, as appointments are made by independent election committee and are not politicised. Lastly, we have grassroots campaigns and direct action. Pressure groups in both countries use these methods widely. Grassroots campaigning is undertaken by all types of pressure groups to put pressure on the elected representatives and raise revenue through membership donations. 
Direct action tends to be used by outsider groups that need to generate media attention and public support for their objectives. We're now going to do a comparison of the influence used by pressure groups in the US and the UK. US pressure groups are generally considered to have more influence than UK ones. The separation of powers in the US allows pressure groups to target the executive, the legislative and the judiciary. The right of the US pressure groups to make unlimited independent expenditures in election campaigns gives wealthy groups significant power and influence over members of the legislative and the executive. However, UK pressure groups can have considerable success if they convince the government to support their cause. The strict restrictions on election spending makes it easier for small or poorly funded pressure groups to achieve their objectives, particularly if public opinion is with them. The UK's Gurkha Justice campaign was catapulted to national attention in 2008 by support from actress Joanna Lumley. It successfully convinced Gordon Brown's government to allow Gurkha veterans to settle in the UK. Furthermore, the sovereignty of Parliament means that a pressure group that convinces the UK government to alter the law in its favour can achieve rapid and significant change that many UK pressure groups would envy. To understand this further, we are going to compare two pressure groups, one from the UK and one from the US. We're going to start with the case study of the Brady campaign versus the Snowdrop campaign. Numerous pressure groups campaign for gun control. The Brady campaign is a prominent example and received more than $37 million of funding in 2019. It began life in 1974 under a different name, but was subsequently renamed to reflect the contribution of James Brady, Ronald Reagan's press secretary. Brady and the president were both shot during the 1981 assassination attempt. The Brady campaign convinced Congress to pass the Brady Handgun Violence Protection and Prevention Act in 1994, which introduced federal background checks on people buying guns. However, gun deaths and school shootings have increased since the 1990s. Gun control groups such as the Brady campaign have been unable to achieve substantive gun controls for several reasons. Gun rights are protected by the Second Amendment and Congress cannot pass legislation that infringes on those rights. Only a constitutional amendment could do so. The Supreme Court has defined the Second Amendment as conferring an individual right to bear arms rather than a collective one. The powerful Na National Rifle Association has successfully defended gun rights and made donations to many members of Congress. Congress has been unwilling to pass even mild gun control legislation, including ones proposed by Obama after the 2012 Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting. While a senator, Joe Biden supported the Brady Handgun Violence Prevention Act. In his 2020 presidential campaign, he promised to plan the end to gun violence epidemic. Now let's look at the Snowdrop campaign. The UK Snowdrop campaign provides a striking contrast to US gun control groups. It was formed in 1996 as a response to the massacre of 16 children aged 5 and 6 and their teacher at Dunn's Lane Primary School in Scotland. This was the deadliest mass shooting in British history. The Snowdrop campaign was set up by local people and supported by many of the bereaved families. It lacked the huge funds, membership and complex organisation structure of US gun control groups, but achieved its objectives in just over a year. Its petition, calling for a total ban on private handguns, was signed by 700,000 people. Its advert, calling on people to support the ban, was voiced by Sean Connery and was shown in around 1,000 UK cinemas. Members of the group travelled to London and met with Prime Minister John Major and leader of the opposition Tony Blair. The Conservative government was persuaded to introduce a ban on larger handguns, and after Blair's government was elected in 1997, this was extended to all handguns. Having achieved its objectives, the Snowdrop campaign disbanded in 1997 after being described by its coordinator as one of the most successful single-issue campaigns ever seen in the UK. There is an argument that does the US or UK pressure groups have more influence depending on the country it's in. We're going to start by looking at US pressure groups. There are more access points to target because of the federal system and more regular elections and the separation of powers. Weak party discipline encourages pressure groups to target Congress. They can spend unlimited amounts on electoral campaigning. Iron triangles exist between government, Congress and powerful interest groups. Pressure groups can use legal challenges to achieve landmark rulings from the Supreme Court. Amicus curiae briefs are used to lobby the Supreme Court. Powerful K Street professional lobbyists have influence with policymakers, and former lobbyists in Trump's government are an example of the revolving door at work. Now let's look at the UK. 
A pressure group that convinces the majority government to pass legislation can achieve its ob objective quickly. The lack of an entrenched constitution means that pressure groups can influence parliament to make sweeping changes to the law, for example, in the cases of same-sex marriage, gun control and abortion. Tight electoral finance laws mean that poorly funded groups are at less of a disadvantage than in the US. Unions have considerable influence on Labour, as they are the party's main financial supporters. The professional lobbying industry is growing, and a revolving door exists in the UK as well as in the US, and cash for access scandals demonstrates that influence can be bought.